Hello Giants fans, welcome to Giants Baseball 101. I'm Gabe Vaughn, your host. We added yet another subscriber today. The past few weeks have just been a real steady upward climb for this channel that I'm really happy about. Thank you so much everybody who subscribed and let's keep them coming. I think we can really grow this thing and if we can do so by the end of this year, that would just be great. The Giants beat the Rockies 5-3 to today, so they get a much needed win here. And although there's still a lot of work to be done as far as undoing the damage that's been done to the Giants National League West chances, it's a step in the right direction. And it, it really came at a time when they needed it. Ryan Walker pitched two innings as the opener today. Two runs scored off of him. In the first inning, the Rockies got one run on an RBI single from CJ Krohn. And then in the bottom of the first, Michael Conforto hit a two-run home run for the Giants to put them ahead 2-1. to one. But then in the top of the second, Austin wins, the guy who we thought was going to be a Giant this year. But because of, of just the unexpected way things unfolded as far as catching went for the Giants, they made a lot of changes. And in Austin wins, he was, I, I forget what, what exactly happened to him, but he was moved from the 40-man roster. And, well, actually, I, I don't think he was on the 40-man going into spring training, but, I mean, he, he left the Giants organization. He's, he's with the Rockies, and he hit a home run today. But um, Blake Sable had an RBI single in the fourth inning, then in the fifth, Austin Slater hit a two-run shot. So this this win over the Rockies, it's you, you just couldn't say enough about the fact that they it it was it just could not have been too soon for the Giants. And this this series against the Rockies too is something that they absolutely have to take advantage of. And I, I mentioned yesterday how critical it was that they come back and win the final two games of this series. And there that that's that's kind of the whole importance of tomorrow. And the Giants are gonna have Logan Webb on the mound. So obviously that is their best chance there. But I mean today they got the bats going and home run power. It showed itself, so it's starting to look a bit like a bit like the Giants look when they're at their best. That's what we saw from them today. And Alex Wood went five scoreless innings, which that, that's a huge plus. And in his last start, he really struggled. Although I, th I think it, it, from what I heard, it may have had something to do with, with just the humidity of the weather that day and what it was doing to his grip on the ball and all that. But I mean, several runs scored off him. He, he's really been used these days as a, a multi-inning pitcher. But he, he when he comes in, he works behind an opener. I, I think the Giants just see it as the best way to deploy Wood to put in behind a guy who's pitching, not to have him immediately face the opposing team's best hitters and... It's kind of, this whole opener strategy is a fairly new thing to baseball, as it is, but lately the Giants have just been one of the primary teams to utilize it, and I, I think in particular, the way they evaluate things, they, they really see an advantage in having a reliever kind of start the game and pitch first to a team's best hitters, and then you can still have a guy come in and go four or five innings. And, and Wood, he came in in the third today and pitched through the seventh. So five scoreless innings. That was effective work from Alex Wood today. And it's something the Giants can be thankful for. Tyler Rogers replaced Wood. And then Camilo Doval got the save. So that's, that's the game for today. And as I said, Logan Webb is pitching tomorrow. And it, it's absolutely a game that the Giants must win here. It, it, it couldn't be overstated. This, this series, it has to 
end in a win for the Giants so they can look toward putting putting the recent past behind them and getting up again in their record. They still have a winning record and things still, I think a thing to remember after just this tough stretch of play the Giants have had. One of the important things to remember is that things still are looking way better than they did a couple months ago. I mean, back then it was like the Giants were in the dust, way out of a playoff spot and with whole, a whole ton of other teams contending for that wild card spot, it really just did not look favorable for them at all. So I think if we just remember the way things were, we can really appreciate what the Giants have done to get to where they are right now. So th things are still looking way better there, but but yeah, the, the Giants, there's, there's still a lot that's up in the air for them right now and a lot that, that they have to, to play for in the near future, so we have to see how it goes. There's, there's tomorrow's game. After that, we've got the All-Star break. And then I believe, uh, I believe it would be next Friday the Giants reconvene and play. And I've, I've just heard a lot about the Giants being, being under issues with being fatigued and all that. And it, it it's probably a, a pretty safe thing to say that the All-Star break doesn't affect all teams equally. And there have been years where it's been when the Giants have been hot and the concern there has been that it would really cool things down for the Giants. And I mean, that, that's that been the concern and I think at least a couple of the past few years. But now, with all that you're hearing about the Giants being tired and maybe that's a reason they're losing energy and probably that would apply to both offensively and, and pitching. So it, it may be that in the case of this particular year, the All-Star break is going to turn out to be a, a much needed rest for them. And the, the Giants, even with the Giants NL West competition, the Dodgers, the Diamondbacks, I'm not sure what they're thinking about this All-Star break and how it's supposed to affect them. But I, I think we're just going to have to see how this plays out. And it really would be good if the Giants could get some kind of positive impact out of these few days of rest they're going to have and maybe come away with, with just a lineup that just has re all of that renewed power and all that so we can see maybe a bit of what we saw in the Giants' recent 10-game winning streak where they're, they're, they're just hitting the ball and hitting for power. If, if that can do them some good and it can revive that, then that's, that, that would just be a huge plus for the Giants. But right now, they have to just focus on the task in front of them, which is, quite simply, winning the game tomorrow. Logan Webb, it's, it's the, there's no reason to think that he wouldn't pitch well like he typically does when he goes out to the mound for the Giants this year. He, he's been the guy, the ultimate guy the Giants have trusted just really for the last few years now and I mean he really emerged in the second half of 2021 and now he's really kept his role as the Giants ace but even beyond that the Giants bullpen is going to have to be in top shape so that they don't blow the game after Webb departs because that it's been an issue a couple times for the Giants this week and that would just be the other thing that can't happen next week. So I, I think that's all for right now. Um, the other bit of news would be that Alex Cobb was selected as an all-star. So he'll be the second giant to, to represent them in, in the all-star game. And I mean, with him going on the injured list and everything, it maybe didn't seem like, but, but he was selected to replace an injured player. I, I, I can't remember now who it was, but Cobb will be in the All-Star game along with Camilo Doval and, and we'll just have to see if they pitch. So thank you for watching. This has been Giants Baseball 101. Please subscribe if you haven't. Also, please leave your questions and comments. You know where to do it. I'll see you next time on Giants Baseball 101.